<laughs> Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for another Chen style Tai Chi class. Let's start with right hand in fist please and left hand straight, pulling back the thumb. Bring the feet together, the hands together and we salute. Gosh, it's a grey old day outside. I'm always shocked when it gets so dark. We're going to begin with a little bit more lymph work. We're going to add and do various uh, variations of lymph routines. So let's take a bit of a rub to the hands just to get the energy going. Uh, I saw one teacher teaching this as goody, 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 goody. This sort of elevates your energy levels, wakes your energy up, gets you feeling good. And um, we're going to place the fists to the sternum and give the sternum a jolly good move around. Good, so remember we're moving the flesh over the bone you could rub, but uh, really we don't want to, um, well, we can't, yeah, we can get the flesh uh, moving while rubbing as well, but I really want to target the, the main drain for the lymph, so to speak. And then with cupped hands, give everything a wee bit of a thump. And I would open out and just come across the chest as well. Good, at both sides everything feels like it's nice and free and then we go on to the collarbone and I'm going to ask you to go to your left uh, collarbone I'm going to go to my left so I'm placing my hand straight on top of the collarbone I'm using my other hands to just uh, brace and support and again moving around and the easiest way to move in circles as always when we learn Tai Chi we move from here, we move from the center, we pivot and that helps to shift things around. So we give a jolly good move around over the bone and as you get used to this work, you can do more repetitions of the patting. Traditional Qigong opening the eight nests, they say 30 pats to each place. I like to build it up. I don't want you to go straight to 30, just uh, in case you, you know you get a big lymphatic um, healing reaction. Let's go to the other collarbone, place the hand on the collarbone and gently move around. So you're above the collarbone, you're below the collarbone. You could do a bit of each. I've seen some that are like rubbing up and down over the collarbone, above and below. Again, rubbing is fine. Personally, I prefer to move the flesh over the bone. That's giving us a little bit of a fascia release. Good, and not overly annoying any pressure points. Good, and a bit of jolly good thumb all the way along with a cupped hand. And rule of thumb is if you're getting tired, maybe that's enough. You've had enough of each one. I find with lymph work, one does get quite tired as we do it. Um, because you are shifting lymph, you are shifting waste out of your system. So that can be quite exhausting. <laughs> so uh, pace yourself. We're going to the backs of the ears and we're just gently brushing down now. Good. Nice, gentle rhythmical motions as you breathe. Good, there's always multiple ways of doing this. So this is one, you may notice your sinus is actually clearing even with this one exercise. You can take hold behind the SCM, this V-shaped muscle, take hold with the heel of the hand and milk the muscle by circling forwards and down. And you can do that starting at the base and working your way up, just clearing the drain. You see what I mean? I'm going forwards and down, but I'm starting at the bottom of the neck and working my way up. That's quite nice. And then you can do the same on the other side. Forwards and down. Working the way up to the back of the ear. Good, and I'm going to stick with the pitter patter here. I don't want you thumping your neck. I have seen some um, 
tutorials where they do actually pat their neck, but I just a feeling that you could overdo it. And uh, there's some sensitive structures in there. So I prefer the pitter patter technique where we just sprinkle the fingers up and down behind the ear. Do the same on the other side, please. Good, and let's just add a little bit uh, of work into the skull. So just a little bit of a dry shampoo, just get your fingers in there and gently move the flesh over the bone. It's this same idea of releasing the fascia and just getting things shifting. And we're getting in there with the fingers and like you're doing a thorough shampoo. Good and then just wash the face over the top. So we're kind of borrowing from the washing without water sequence. And again, coming up and over behind the ears and down. Good, very nice. All right, okay. So let's move on back to sort of ping-ponging back into the big six. Let's rub our hands again. And let's go to the arm crease to the armpit. So we take one arm up above the head and get into the crease and just gently move the flesh around. All the way around the crease itself, but get onto the body. Again, just be careful of any breast tissue. Don't be pushing into uh, delicate flesh, but just around. You can sort of push, <laughs> push any uh, bits out of the way in order to get to that whole section. Yeah, good. Under the arm and around the arm with cupped hand. Just give it a jolly good pass. Lovely. On the other side, get in there and move the flesh across the structures of the body. I'm actually doing the top of the arms as well, all the way round the armpit and round, if, I, if you can reach, maybe even use your fingers, get into the back there. I think that's for me where it gets clogged a little bit, the lymph can get stuck. Good, with cupped hands. Good. Jolly good thump. Good. Now I quite like to return to the sternum. So let's go again. So think of it, we're, we're clearing the drain and then we're moving the sludge <laughs> in the sewer system. So we want to go back and clear the drain again. I think that's quite useful. And in my advanced lymph work that I do in Emmet technique, it's, uh, it's something that we do. We keep clearing the main drain. Good. Good. I mean, if you were in a hurry, maybe you could just do it once, but why not keep clearing? Good. And again, onto the shoulder blade. As everything sort of goes like that into the into the drain. Good. So we rub. I'm just I'm not doing it as thoroughly the second time, but I'm just giving it a wee reminder to keep clear. And on the other side. Good, and a wee thump. Good, lovely. Now we're moving on to the abdomen. Now we can do just adhere to the abdomen and give it a wee rub round. And if I were you, I would be going up the right. I am, yeah, up the right, across and down to the left because that's the direction of the large intestines. And we're going to actually do that now. I mean, this is general movement round just to keep everything clear and that's good. We can stretch up and down, that's good. Uh, but let's do it round in circles. So identify your right side, which is over here. So you're gonna start here and you're going to work up, get your fists in and we go across. I'm mirroring for you, this is not uh, correct for me. And down the other side, good, so we're actually following the line 
of the large intestine. Good, so let's do that again. We start on the right, and we go up. We come across the top. Again, use your body to circle and down the left. Good. And we can do general massage. So again, up the right, across and down the left. This is straight out of your basic Tai Chi Qigong training. Good. And then let's do a drum roll. And again, you can start at your left and go up and across and down. I'm going to go up to my, sorry, up to your right side. I'm going up my right side, across and down. But actually what I've discovered when I was doing these various lymph work things is actually just doing general mobilizing and stretching works just as well, you know, so that it's all good. Just uh, get things mobilizing and give yourself Remember, over 70% of your lymphatic system works through your digestive system. So if we get this stuff clear and working well, your whole lymph system is going to really thank you. Now, there's other aspects to it. We urinate out toxins. We defecate out toxins. We sweat out toxins. We breathe out toxins. Uh, there's lots of different ways that our body gets rid of the stuff that it doesn't want. And doing lymph work will help with all of these aspects. It's basically just helping to shift that which needs shifted. So we're going to rub again, and we're going to go now to the crease of the legs. So let's get in there to the crease and do a little, again, a mobilizing movement where you're stretching the flesh over the structures of the body. So again, move your center. Good. I know this stuff doesn't look particularly um, great. You know, you wouldn't be doing this at a bus stop. I appreciate that. But in the privacy of your own home, over to the other side, please. Uh, this work can hugely affect uh, your system, can really help your immune system uh, and just help you feel free of toxins. You know, a nice, clear, happy system. And this helps with everything. If you have been ill, this will help you recover. If you have a sluggish immune system, this will help it fight better. Uh, let's bend the, the knees, please. Sit down, find the crease of your legs, and we strike to the crease of the legs. You could do it one at a time, and uh, that's fine. Good. And again, you can build it up to 30 times. Even three times is enough. Just you can probably feel that now. That area is sort of zinging. It's feeling more, oh, what's happening? That's part of the process. We want to wake up the system. Sometimes you can feel pretty awful after doing lymph work. And that's good because it means that the stuff that has been stuck and yuck inside your body is starting to shift. So please don't uh, freak out if you feel horrible. Don't give it up as a bad job. You actually need it. Those times when you feel pretty yuck after lymphatic work are the times that you needed it the most. So once you have drunk plenty of water and moved around gently and had a bit of a rest and gone to the toilet and all these things that, that this work does, you will feel so much better on the other side of it. So please, persevere with it. It can make you feel tired. It can make you feel yuck, but it is because it is shifting the stuff out. It's like getting the cleaners around and having a good clean of your house. It might look a mess while they're doing it, but once it's done, you'll be happy. Good. Okay. So we've looked at the inguinal nodes. Now we're going to go to the popliteal. So this is the backs of the knees. So we're going to rub again. Get yourself in your nice ski jump position. Take your hands to the back of the knees and give them a jolly good rub. Good with cupped hands. Say so after surgery or after any medical procedures, not directly after, you need 
to have time to heal. Uh, and if there is um, broken flesh, you need it to, to heal up so that you're not irritating it. But this will really help with the healing process, will help to reduce inflammation uh, caused by edema, caused by fluid buildup, the lymph building up around it. It will help it to shift. Good, so we're going to rub again. Now we're going to do the same thing basically on the upper body for the elbow. So we get into the elbow crease and we give it a wee rub and keeping the elbow slightly bent. Thump, 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 thump. Good, on the other side. And thump, 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 thump. Good. Now we're going to do a little bit more of a general full body workout uh, for the lymph. We're going to do it in multiples of three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. We're going to start at the shoulders and we're going to pat three times down the shoulders. One, two, three. And then three times down the upper arms. One, two, three. Three times down the lower arms. One, two, three. Turn the hands over and come up. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Do it again. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm going to give a link uh, on the recording for uh, another lymph specialist lady doing this. So three times down on each section, three times up on each section, over to the other side. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, down, and up. The lymph loves rhythm. Good. Okay, so let us go down the side of the body. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, down, side. And up the inside. Let's do the other side. Down. Up the inside. Again, the first side. Down the outside. Up the inside. Down on the other side. Up the inside. Last time, ready? Good work out in itself. Up the inside. Other side. Good. Okay, we're going to go down from the kidneys. Down up the front. Down the kidneys. Like the threes, but don't get too worried about it. Just cover all your bases. Up the front. And shake out. Oh, do you feel you've done a workout? <laughs> it's a thorough warm up, isn't it? So now we're going to finish with our Bai Bing Xiao, our 100 ailments go away. Now, a, an option to help with your lymph is one of these rebounders. Let me show you what a rebounder looks like if you don't know. I'll just behind the curtain. Here we go. So being very interested in what people say, it's a little trampoline. So um, I've heard by a lady called Barbara O'Neill, who is a natural path um, and has some very good stuff out there, that this is one of the best things that you can possibly have uh, for your lymph. And you just stand and you bounce. And every time you bounce up, all of the lymph in your body gets a free ride uh, and every time you bounce down, all of the little valves in your um, in your lymphatic system close under the 
uh, gravitational thumping, uh, gravitational sudden thump that you get, all of the valves close. So it's an excellent way. Let's get rid of that now. I like it, it's fun. I'm sure the kids will like it. I'm gonna take it over so the kids can play with it as well. Uh, but every time you, you, you bounce down the lymph uh, vessels, the little uh, valves close. So it's helping to pump the lymph to the main drain and get the, the lymph back up the legs um, so that it can drain. So, you know, if you have, I don't know, I'd say you could probably get a cheap one for like 60 quid. That's fun. You could just do a few bounces a day on it and, and you'd be done. But you don't need one of those <laughs> at all. <laughs> you can do it um, just by bouncing. And that's why we uh, that's why we call this exercise 100 ailments go away. Literally, it's helping your entire immune system and waste disposal system do its thing the best that it possibly can. And we're using the calf muscles. The calf muscles act as the pump to help. Uh, move the lymph, but the downwards, um, the shock to the body helps the lymph vessels tonify. They help, uh, they close all of their little valves. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to lift the arms. You don't need to do this bit, but I like it very much. Uh, I've got this lifted arms from Spring Forest Qigong, um, but it's a very traditional movement. And we're just going to bounce. We lift off the heels and you can do it with a bit of a thump, which is very good uh, oops, for uh, your bones as well. But if that's uncomfortable, you can just keep the heels nice and light, but you're still getting that feeling of bouncing. And the hands, the wrists are bouncing up and down, which are stimulating and pumping. So they're stimulating the energetic system, but it's really helping the lymphatic system as well. And relax. And you probably feel after, you know, 30 seconds of that, you really, you've moved a lot <laughs> of stuff. And it's quite, um, maybe not labor intensive, but it's quite an intensive little exercise. So if you find that a bit much with the hands up, again, pick your moments. You wouldn't be doing that at a bus stop. Well, you might stop a bus if you do it, uh, but you can do it just letting your arms hang and bounce. And that's that's the more traditional one that I always did um, in class that you're just lifting and bouncing. Um, but I like the arms up version because it's helping the lymph with gravity drain into the main drain. So it's really spot on from the point of view of lymph drainage. Elevation is one of the best things that you can do. So we want to do our physical manipulation. We want to do our little drum rolls and patting. We want to keep our fluids up. We want to keep moving and breathing well. Gently moving is fine uh, for lymph, but keep moving, keep, you know, even just if you're standing listening to me, you can be doing your circles rather than just waiting for the next exercise. Gently moving helps to pump the lymph. But when you're at rest, elevation is one of your best friends. So I'm sure you've heard of the rice, the rest, ice, uh, compression and elevation for when you're injured. It's not just for injury, the elevation helps the lymph to make its way back to the drain. So anything above your chest height will direct the lymph back to the drain. So um, often I hear, you know, people have an injury or a sore place and they've been told to, you know, put their feet up. And so they get these little footstools and they put their foot on a footstool and they think, oh, well, I'm putting my feet up. No, putting your feet up is putting your feet above your chest, <laughs> you know? So if you're lying in bed, for example, that's a good time. You can put a few cushions under your legs and that will be above your chest. So that will help them drain. Or if you're comfortable enough to do so, you could literally get your bottom right up, change direction, please. You could get your bottom right up against your headboard and have your legs straight up in the air. That's going to 
really help to drain the lymph back and uh, help with edema and help um, just move things along. So combining that with breathing exercises, if you have your legs up against a wall and you're breathing deeply, my goodness, you can do a great deal uh, to help your system recover after whatever yuck is going on, whatever bugs are going on. So there you go. There's a bit more intensive lymph work today. I hope you enjoyed it. Basically, just give everything a thump. <laughs> if in doubt, thump it. Uh, but gently, with care, with a cupped hand, um, and move. Do your heel taps at the end. Make sure everything is nice and relaxed. And as I say, if, uh, if it's socially acceptable, get your arms up there and wiggle your hands about. And uh, we're talking about the trampoline for, for children grandchildren uh, doing this work I think would be really fun for children and uh, recently I had a, a retired um, pediatric nurse in my class and she was saying there's been an awful lot of kids with lymphatic issues um, through the years uh, with really compromised immune systems coming into hospitals so don't wait until you're you know um getting long in the tooth to do this work introduce it and do it with children do it with grandchildren it's fun i mean who doesn't like doing body body drums and, and bouncing about you don't need a trampoline to get the results and if you're not sure about remembering all this where to rub and everything else just do the trampoline just do your hundred ailments go away it's well named it helps your entire system to to heal so good i hope you enjoyed that that's our lymph treatment for today <laughs> uh, please have a drink of water if you don't have one now uh, directly after class so i'm going to um lead by example cheers this is literally just hot water and one forgets how nice water can be it's very um essential for, for functioning. If you find that water doesn't quench your thirst, maybe consider taking one grain of natural salt, maybe Himalayan pink salt or your sea salt, and just put that in your mouth and let it dissolve first and then have a drink. Uh, because salt is important for our function. And talking about edema, when we have um, swelling, um, uh, fluid retention it could be that there's not enough salt in your system so sometimes when people have edema and they see a doctor the doctor will actually put them on salt tablets so today there's this whole stigma about salt and um, people think that it is the devil that it's not good at all and it's not good in excess and certainly table salt and um, with the anti-caking agents um, can be an issue. The anti-caking agents can wreak havoc with us. So natural salt is best. We don't want to overdo it, but it is vital for our cell function. It is vital for our life. So we don't want to completely eradicate salt from our diet because it causes problems if we do. We need salt. Um, so yeah, be, be careful about that. All right. Okay, let's do some Chen style, shall we? <laughs> um we have enough time to do the whole form uh would you like to do the whole form folks i'm not seeing uh, is that a thumbs up yes okay yeah let's do the whole form we'll go at a nice gentle pace allow yourself to um flow don't worry about making mistakes but do your best see how you get on with it uh and Every time we do it, maybe new information will arise. You'll go, oh, actually, I'm not sure about that or what's she doing there. So take note of these things because uh, that's part of the practice. Once we realize there's an issue or an area that needs work, we can work on it. Okay, so Lao Jia Ilu, the whole form, please. We start with a bit of wuji. We come together, feet together, lengthening up, chin down and back, and take a few moments 
after all that excitement to calm down. listening behind. And let's gently lengthen the fingers down. Doing what you can comfortably, please. We begin. Take your space if you need it.
end of part one. One more step back. I got on the horse. Relax to center. Gather, roll down to the left, left side comes across. Prepare and kick. Turn, prepare, kick. Turn. Lift left, turn palms, kick left, three steps to the left. Planting flowers, draw into fists and punch towards the earth. Turn, release, Monkey holds peach. Release. Pulse kick. Pulse kick. Left palm faces up. Protect the heart. Circle kick. Okay. 
stepping left, gather to kick right. Three way punch. Repair. Relax to center, take your time to set up the punch and punch. Part three. Can we do that again? Sorry, I ran out of space. So we want to stay left. And Forwards and backwards tricks. I'm going to step back. And again, I'm going to step back to prepare for Jade Maiden. One, two, three. Part four. Take one more step back.
another step back. more. My thoughts on dwarves. Relax to center. End game ready, we do our little circle and gather to the left. Right shoulder back, keep turning. Relax to center, punching diagonally down. Up the cup. Very good, very good everyone. Okay, so we're getting through the form. How can we improve the form? 
Well, we can practice the form. That's definitely one aspect, just going through it, using this video, using the videos that we've done in the past to just repeat and repeat. But there are other ways that you can improve your form without even doing the form. Of course, you can't abandon the form altogether. You have to keep it going. So what ways can we improve the form? Well, one, most importantly, standing practice. And I'll hold my hands up. I've had a bout of illness recently and my standing practice is not where it should be. So that's something that I know I need to work on. And I can tell that because when I go to do the deep stances, like the, uh, the coming through at the end there before the roll, I can feel, no, it's not there. The strength isn't there, but it's not strength, it's structure. The structure isn't there because I haven't been putting the hours in doing my standing practice and doing a bit every day. It will really help without doing any extra form practice. You can, can, can what's the word? Um, transform your form um, by doing structure and relaxation, just standing, and breathing, listening to your body, letting go through your structure. So that can definitely help. The second aspect that you can really help everything with all your form is your silk railing. Going back to absolute basics and just putting in the time to listen, to feel, to relax, and make sure that the basics are where they should be. And that is for anyone, no matter what, a level you feel you've got to, uh, this is the thing. And when I go training, I try very hard to make sure that I get uh, the silk reeling class under my belt each time because we always learn. Um, and it's just uh, polishing and it's getting your ABCs. You know, it's like writing calligraphy. In order to write beautiful calligraphy, you need to practice each letter again and again and again and then when you go to write a whole sentence each letter will know exactly what to do and so that's that's silk reeling basically it's your alphabet so we practice doing that if you can put your standing practice together with a bit of silk reeling each day or alternate so you're doing a little bit of standing a little bit of silk reeling then when you come to do your form wow you will find that the form has improved hugely without having to do just endless repetitions of the form. Actually, it's much harder to get a really good form just practicing form. If we practice the basics, then the form benefits, it unfolds. It's, uh, it's just one of these things. It's like putting all the good ingredients really carefully prepared, and then when you chuck them in the oven, they'll come out lovely. Whereas if you just keep chucking stuff into the oven and hope for the best, it'll come out, but uh, it's, not, it's not the best way to prepare. So uh, we keep going back to standing. Maybe next week we'll do a little bit of standing or at least structure work, alignment work. So even if you want to do seated, stand, seated standing practice, uh, you can get very far and it's so relaxing it sets us up for our day it sets us up for our week so it's really useful practice nothing ever goes to waste when you put your time in for tai chi but we had better finish so we'll just do a very little bit return to basics of whacking yourself <laughs> give yourself a wee thump turning the waist soften the knees I was listening to a lady online yesterday who has the most beautiful Sanskrit. She's a, I assume British, I'm not sure where she's from, but she, she sings beautiful Sanskrit, so ancient Indian song and um, language. And uh, someone asked her, how long did it take her to learn Sanskrit? And she had a really good answer. She says, that's impossible to answer because once you start learning Sanskrit, you never stop. And Tai Chi is the same. It's not how long did it take you to learn Tai Chi. If you're learning Tai Chi, you're learning Tai Chi. It's lifelong learning. But boy, do you get a lot of good out of it as you go. Let's go to the legs, please. And lower legs. Good, and up you come again. 
Body drums really are a fantastic way to stimulate the body to grow stronger and to do its job well. A bit like a plant, you know, plants thrive when they are stimulated. So if you have plants out in the wild and animals are giving them a wee nibble and running past them and nudging up against them, they will thrive much more than if they're just sat lonely and <laughs> unstimulated. And our bodies are the same. So let's go back to our 100 ailments go away. Lift the arms up, please. And a little bounce. Breathe. It's quite joyful, isn't it? It's a bit silly, <laughs> but it's very joyful. Breathe, relax. Thump, thump, thump down onto the heels. And let the arms swing. Let them release. Oh, well done, folks. Well, I hope you have had an enjoyable class. I hope you were, um, return to this video again and again and use it and have a wee look at the links. Um, because though I am a lymph expert in the Emmett technique, I'm not an expert in all the other lymph techniques. I've done manual lymph drainage, but uh, there's lots of information out there and I think they're all very good. Uh, there's there's a way that suits you. So if you find today's work was a bit, oh, no, I'm not sure about that. There are other ways to do it. Um, so we'll maybe look at that in the fullness of time at other ways to influence and help the lymphatic system. But for now, let's take right hand in fist, left hand straight, feet together, hands together. Thank you very much. You can say, Lao Shur Hao. That's a student's thank you and teacher thank you. And I'll stop recording. See you next time. <laughs>